We are back on again with Lucius Rouser the fourth. And um, you was in some good stuff already. Right? You jumped right in. You said you you're talking about your theme, and your theme it says you you are you have been cautious but not consumed. So, say that. Talk about that again. Yeah, man. So the, the theme of our household uh, has been uh, be cautious but not consumed. So we're being cautious, we're taking all the precautions, we're following all the rules, we're washing our hands, what we're supposed to do, staying aware about you know, what's taking place, but we're not consumed, meaning it doesn't, it's not overtaking our lives. Like, we're not consumed by it. It's not all we think about, oh, man, it's by that. Right. No, we're, we're standing in a place of faith, we're standing in a place of rest and trusting in God and being, yeah, so we just been, we just been walking around saying, hey, we're going to be cautious, we're going to make sure we do what we're supposed to do, but we're going to be, we're not going to be consumed by this thing. We're going to live, we're going to, we're gonna live life. We're gonna engage one another. We're gonna engage people the best way we can, and uh, we're gonna to continue to trust God through it all, man. So it's been That's a good awesome. time of just fellowship in God's word, fun, you know, work, and just really getting to know each other more. So it's been a good time. That's good. I love that. Cautious but not consumed. Look at the pastor, the preacher coming out in you. Um, uh, you like you be preaching to your audience, you, to your own family. That's what I'm saying. A man of God. I love it. Um, no, I mean I really do. You know, appreciate it. And again. Um, we are here with Lucius Rouser the Fourth. He is a, one of our city pastors, but also our worship pastor, a man of God, someone that is passionate about the Lord Jesus and His glory. And so, Lou, um, I'm so I'm excited about that. Today we're talking about actually um, worshiping at home. You know, we've been, you know, what you what you just already jumped into, just like the passion already has coming coming out of you. Is this really is this about like how? Um, in this time of COVID-19, when we've been suppressed and we're kind of stuck in these environments in our own homes, what does that look like for us to consistently worship the Lord? But before we kind of jump in, I wanted to say what's up to a couple of people. Thank you guys. We had some technical difficulties. Basically, the technical difficulty was I forgot to hit share screen before so that they people only heard you audio. They didn't see your, your, beautiful, your beautiful face, Lou. So... We wanted to make sure that people were able to see that. And so I got to say what's up first to my beautiful bride, Angie. What's up? Keenan Elder, one of the elders. Keenan Akers is on watching. Angelica is watching. Angelica is watching. Loretta is here. Jackie Taylor. What's up, Jackie? I got some information for you. I'll, I'll call you later on today. You know, um, Angela Bergs. What's up, Blueprint? What's up, you? Um, yeah, she said, Pastor. Pastor Lou. She spelled it just like that, pasta. So yes, so we are we are here. We are um, excited. So Lou, I mean, since Corwin, I'm gonna take one of Corwin's things that we, you know, when we asked during our members meetings um, about ice cream, like you know, um, what is your ice cream of choice? You know, do you, you know what is your ice cream of choice? Uh, when I was eating ice cream before I turned forty, was uh, mm. <laughs> butter pecan. Butter pecan was my choice. That is crazy. So it's, it's already, you're already at that stage where you can't. Yeah. Well, my yeah. don't like ice cream no more. And I'm so uh, disappointed. It is. It's a disappointing thing. And that's the same. I, I experienced the same disappointment. So now my ice cream is kind of like, it, it is like, actually, I don't, I don't eat ice cream because I've also hit that 40, um, that 40 and up club. But, you know, but I don't know. Let me ask you this. Has, have you ever had an acai bowl? So is that a is that a can we say acai bowls are replacements for ice cream? Tell me so I can start doing it. Hey man. Hey, I'm for me an acai bowl, a good acai bowl has been some has been my replacement for ice cream. So anytime I have that ice cream, you know, desire, I'll go out and get an acai bowl. Now it's a lot more expensive. It's a lot more expensive, but it I've learned that it's been a good replacement for you know, for this, this thing, because, you know, for the, for us, for those that are 40 and up and lactose intolerant, you know, um, here it is. You heard it first. Acai bowls is the healthy replacement for your ice creams that you need. Amen. So there it is. I said it and that's what it is. There, that's what it is. That's, that's what it is. It, it's official. What's up, Shamisha? How are you doing? I hope all is well. Before we get started, again, I wanted to let everyone know that we are here every day at 11 a.m. This is what we would consider the Passion Week. Um, all throughout the week, we are spending some disciplines. We, we, we've made a commitment yesterday that we want to live passionately 
during the Passion Week by cultivating some disciplines that we have. So every single day on here, we, we challenge you that we're going to be reading the book of Mark, the Passion Week in the book of Mark. And Passion is basically from um, all the way from the Palm Sunday going to the resurrection. And every day we're going to be doing something as a church you know, uh, family and in, in doing that. So we started on Mark chapter 11 yesterday. Today we're on Mark chapter 12. We will be in 13. Tomorrow, Wednesday, uh, Thursday, we'll be on 14. And then 15, we'll, um, we'll be in chapter 15 on, on Friday. But we also will be celebrating Good Friday. I'll be preaching from um, Mark 15. And then we'll have a day of kind of lamenting and fasting on Saturday. And then we'll come back and we'll celebrate our resurrected King on Easter Sunday. And we told everyone to make sure that you guys are getting um, your, the elements for communion. We're going to come as a, as a body on this time uh, around 12 o'clock and just celebrate communion together collectively and, you know, and just be able to chance to just send praises to our Lord and our Savior and just celebrate that he has risen. And, um, and so we're, we're doing that. Another thing that we're doing is that we're memorizing Isaiah 40, 28 through 31 together as a, as a body, you know, have you not heard? I mean, have you not, do you not know that the Lord, our God, the Lord, our God is creator of all the earth. And that's really, that's my first stab. I'm, you know, I'm going to be memorizing that. And just, we, we want to memorize that whole text um, of Isaiah 40. And so, <clears throat> And this week throughout, we're going to be talking about disciplines. And so today we're going to be talking when, with Pastor Lucius about worshiping at home. And what does that look like for us to cultivate an environment for worship at home? Since that's the only place we got right now. COVID-19 is the only place we have it. So what are some practical ways for us to worship at home? Second, tomorrow, tomorrow we'll be, um, again, going from study. We'll be with um, Derwin. And we're going from study into proclamation. Thursday, we'll talk about the art of confession. And then Friday, we'll talk about lament as an act of worship, lament as an act of worship. And so we're excited about this week of just cultivating the, the distance. Um, for, again, one more time, Lou, I just want to say a shout out to everybody that's in. Samisha said, what's up? Good morning to my handsome bros. Oh, we are handsome bros. So good morning to you, beautiful queen. You know, um, Darnell Lewis is on here. So what's up? Rob Harden asked the question, what about the 50 and up? I don't know, Rob. You got to tell us what what do we have to give up at 50? We know we have to give up dairy and ice cream at 40. The question is, what do we give up at 50? I don't know. And I got I still got about six years before I get there. You know, so we'll 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 wait um, for that. Kimberly is watching. What's up? Chris Harden is watching. And then so to saying what's up to to all BL Evans is watching. Um, and then Cody Dickens, what's up, man? All the way from Illinois. What's up, Domingo? So ultimately, um, let me make sure my internet is good. All right. Ultimately, we're here talking to Pastor Lucius. He is one of our city pastors and also worship pastor for Blueprint Church and really wanted to, a chance to talk to you, Lou, about just kind of worshiping at home. What does that look like? And so when, when you think about this idea of worshiping at home, what are some of the some of the ideas or thoughts that come to your mind? Oh, you hit you hit um, mute or something. We can't hear you anymore. Yeah, now we can hear you. Hey, Lou, like what I've learned, Lou, for again, for us at that 40 up that we don't touch. Don't touch any dials when you're you just don't touch anything because you you end up messing up stuff. So just talk at this point. Just talk. Then you have to call your kids to come fix it. Yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah. See, yeah. So we just want to just kind of stay away from that. All right. So, uh, no, uh, first thing that uh, I think that we have to embrace when you think about um, facilitating worship at home is one, is just knowing that you are, like, you are worshiping. Like, you don't have to be me. You don't have to be Lori. You don't have to be Miriam. Like, we are all called to be worship leaders. And when I think about a worship leader, it's always about someone who's leading someone to worship God or, or, or discipling someone to uh, to prostrate their heart or turn their hearts toward God and start valuing God above everything else. So when you have to embrace one, the identity that you are a worship leader, you don't have to sing like me or whatever. Like I've lived with Dahadi before and I've heard him sing old Negro spirituals around the crib before. He's enjoying God. He's worshiping God because it's who he is. So I think that's the first thing we have to realize, like we're all called to, to worship God. Even when you think about Colossians chapter three, verses like 12 through 17, he talks about, he said, he said, yo, yo, he said, man, like 
put off the old man. He said, but put on, you know, make compassion, gentleness, all this. He said, man, he said, but may the, the word of Christ dwell amongst you richly. And he said, teach and admonish what? He said, with hymns, with psalms, with spiritual songs. He said, singing songs unto God with gratitude in the heart. So he's, he called all of us that are chosen ones of God to do that. So I think that's the first step, realizing like, man, like I am called to worship and praise God. As I a, love as that. I love what you're saying. It's the idea that we are all called as worship leaders. Um, what are what are some ways for us to to really think about that? Because when I think about worship, when I think about Sunday gathering, when I think about things like that, I I come to you. I come to our worship leaders, and you lead us in worship. You know when. But for me to take on that identity, for me to think about, I am a worship leader. What are some things that need to go on in my mind, and how are you helped other people to take on that identity? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So just just look at yourself and realize you do a lot more singing than you think you do or don't do. <laughs> think about when you think about your favorite song. Some, like so many times my wife walk around the house and she'd be like singing, I don't know what you come to do. On her breath, she just humming. Mm -hmm. Like it's it's music in you all the time, man. And if you would just embrace the fact like, hey, I'm just going to be free with who God called me to be. And it's not about if I'm on tune. It's not about if I'm on key. It's not about if I'm trying to riff or do it the way they do it in a song. Like, I'm just going to allow myself to fully express God the best way I can. So just finding a place in you that's authentically who you are so you can express whom you love, you know what I mean, which is God. You know what I mean, which I is love Christ. that. So, yeah, so just being able to dig down and kind of how God has made us and recognize the internal understanding. But also, I've heard you say multiple times when 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 you talk about this idea of worship leading and leading people in worship that, you know, specifically when you think about the term worship leading, this idea of leading people in worship. And that's really that to in, in a lot of senses, whenever we're doing evangelism, whenever we're, we're whenever we're engaging with our neighbors, that what we're doing is that we are authentically worshiping God and we are calling others to join in the chorus of worshiping yes. our God and our Savior with us. And so we're, you know, and, and a lot of times what's infectious, and, and I think many have said and have said this to you and about even our worship team, is the idea is it's like when they see you worshiping, it makes us want to join in and worship with you. Right. And, that, and so like when we first understand, like what you're saying is not something that we just got to play mental gymnastic. This is a reality is that if you are a worship leader in your neighborhood, is that when people are seeing you worshiping your king through your through our works, through our through our songs, through our through how we handle ourselves, that we are worshiping him. And then we have the ability to call others to come and to worship our God and our king together. So understanding the identity, nothing is is huge. I love, I love, love. I mean, that's how you're starting, you know, that. Yeah, yeah. When you look at, like, to what you're saying, when you look at Abraham, he took his son to talk about, he said, hey, me and, hey, I'll be back, we're going to worship. And all he was doing was going to, you know, to, to submit to what God called him to do. Hey, sacrifice this beautiful gift that I give you, which is your son. He said, hey, me and him, we're going to worship. So, yeah, just realize, like, it is the posture of heart. I would even say, go father said, Worship leading is discipleship. Yeah, because that's, that's what good. we're grabbing. We say, "Hey, man, we're trying to get one another to a point to where we're just focusing on Him, and He's exalted in our hearts." And then we just all have different tools. You're worship leading when you're preaching. I'm worship leading when I'm leading when I'm singing. Like we're all worshiping God because people seeing that, hey, worship comes from the word of work, worship, but meaning like bringing worth to something. So if in our lives we're bringing worth to God and people can see it. They want that. And that's why people get attracted to certain religions. They say, man, I'm attracted to how you bring worth to that person or that God whom you keep talking about and whom you live for. That's so, good. Amen. I love that idea. Declaring worth. Declaring worth. That is that's awesome. So let's so we're now we're talking about worship leaders, but right now in the midst of COVID-19, we're, we're specifically thinking about worshiping in our home. We're not talking about coming together. The government has said don't even come together to gather. And so when we talk about this idea of worshiping at home, right, what are some ways to create some atmosphere? Like, how do you create that environment so that we can worship at home? What are some things that we can do to to do that? Yeah, yeah. So I always think I always think about it in like three different three different levels. I think about one, uh, you engage worship. Two, you model worship. Three, you facilitate worship. 
Mm. So one, when I say one, you engage worship. I'm always in my own self. That's a personal thing. I'm privately engaged in worship. That's good. Because you don't want to, on well, Sunday mornings, I'm not doing something I don't do at home. If I'm jumping all over the place on the stage or on Sundays, please believe you're going to go in my bathroom and see me do the same in my bedroom or what have you. So one, you engage worship yourself. And how do you do that? Um, one resource you can go to is a guy, man. He's dope. He's called, his name is William Augusto. And he has a lot of like worship instrumentals. Like sometimes they're like three hour worship instrumentals and they're great for just, hey, turn it on, whether it's through YouTube, whether it's Alexa or whatever, and you just let that mug play and you spend time with the Lord hmm. yourself. Like, man, beginning of the day, abiding, because he said outside of him, you can do nothing. So you're just abiding with him alone. So one, I would say, man, you have to have a consistent rhythm of you engaging in worship with God yourself. And who did you, you say? Who did you say was the name William Augusto? William Augusto. William Augusto. How do you spell that? You can't just you can't just say names like that. You just got to be able to spell it so that we can actually go to that. Uh, well, y'all know how to spell William. W i l l i a m, and then Augusto is A G U S T S O. Okay, that's good. Oh, S -E -O. Yeah, but William Augusto, you can find his stuff on Apple Music. You can find it on YouTube. You can find it on Spotify. And it's, a, it's just a bunch of instrumentals, man. And it's just beautiful for just really abiding in God because the word said, hey, without me, you can do nothing. So one- So what does that look they, like? Before before you go into the next one, what does that look like yeah. for you? Like, do you just play William Augusto and then you just kind of sit and you reflect? Or what are some of the things that you're doing to cultivate that engaging in that, that atmosphere of worship for you personally? Awesome. So it's important, one, I'm sure you do this too because you're a busy guy like I am. Like one, I find a time to where it's early in the morning before anybody else needs your interaction, before they need you to engage with them. You get away, you find a place in your home, whether it's with headphones in your ears, which is fine, or just playing it softly in your bedroom. Or whatever it looks like for me is that I usually I go into my walk-in closet, I put my headphones on, and I just get on my knees, or I sit on my uh, you know, Indian style, and I just... Man, talk to the Lord. And while the music is going, I'm just thanking him. And I go through the prayer of thanksgiving. I go through the prayer of confession. I go through all the prayers. And I'm just spending time with God. And in, in a, in one of the things I do a lot of is just say, hey, God, I know I can't do this day without you. Give me mm -hmm. my daily bread, God. I want to find. So just really sitting, getting away from everybody, and just sitting with him, allowing him to focus your mind on him before you start your day. Okay, so that's good. So you get away. You get some time. You set a time. It's, and it's a discipline that you're cultivating. I, I am impressed, Lucius, that I that you do say you sit Indian style. I thought that was another thing that you have to give up at forty is sitting Indian style because that one for me. That was for, for somebody else. I was like, yeah, because <laughs> yeah, I was just like, they're not coming on. They're gonna stay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was just like, oh man, because I I thought about I had the image of thinking of sitting Indian style. I was like, God, you got a good minute before I before I'm locked in this position. You have to perform a miracle to get me out of this Indian style. So. Man, that's that's the option. Okay. I'm, a, I'm at the age where I've been on my knees only for so long. Now I just got to go lay prostrate. That's just yeah, that is so funny. No, that's good. All right. Yeah, so you. Can you, that, quick, you can do that in your car, too. Yeah. You can go outside. You don't have a place in your house. I go to my car sometime and turn on in my car and just sit back and lay back and just spend time with God. So the car is a great place for that. And I love it what you're saying because, as Laura said on there, it's the idea. Um, the idea of being able to get away, because especially as parents, like we need to be able to find it. I love what you're saying, getting it in the closet, getting it in your car. You you can still keep your kids and make sure your kids are safe, but still get away and being able to do this. So I think that I love that. So go to the number two. You said number two was you model worship. So you model worship. Now this, you model it per, uh, publicly. So now you're not just doing a prayer closet. Now you're bringing that to where everybody else is, your living room, your kitchen. So while you're cooking, while you're with this breakfast, dinner, whatever, like turn on some music, whether from your television, sometimes do it from a television, again, from Alexa, uh, your phone, whatever, and you just let it feel the atmosphere. And then now you're modeling it. Now your children, now your spouses are watching you engage in worship. So while you're cleaning, you just, man, glory, it could be your favorite song. I'm no longer a slave to fit. And you just, so now they're seeing you. It's your modeling what it looks like to spend your time throughout the day with the Lord. And it don't have to be all day, but it's just showing that, hey, my, 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 the, the leader of this household or the leaders are taking time out 
to spend with the Lord. And now you're modeling for the public, I want to say, for your community and your household to see it. Yeah, I love that. So when you think about this idea of modeling and going out, so this is just basically, you know, going, there's times where you need to get away and it's just you and the Lord. But then there's times that even if you're, when you talk about modeling, it's not necessarily that you're asking anybody to do it with you. It's just like, you're just being, you know, public with your your worship. You're, you're just modeling for other people and it's not even ch charging them or challenging them to do it. It's just them seeing you do it. Yes, yes, because it's always said you learn by what you see. Cookie mean learn by what's spoken out of somebody's mouth. Yeah, you begin to say. I, I remember right now to the day. So many times, say my father, and my mother do it, and even my sons that are now fourteen and sixteen remember at being five and four, and they remember even CD comes the old Israel Holland songs are seeing that I can remember you being on the floor worshiping God. I remember yeah. you raising your hand. So yes, modeling it. So you engage. You engage worship one and two, you model worship. So let me ask you this. What if you can't sing? And what if, like, for some people say, my singing is actually the anti-climatic version of what the, the worship, like, if I'm modeling it before and I'm singing, no, I'm no longer, um, see? What, like, you see what I'm saying? Is that takes you out of the heart of worship. So now, what what happens, like, for those who think they can't sing, and I did that on purpose. I really can sing, but I did that on purpose just to, you know, let you know, you know, how sometimes that can take you out of that mindset. But let's just imagine I couldn't sing, you know, and what uh, what what do you do? I mean, do you still sing? I mean, how do you model that? How do you model worship or praise to, to the king if you can't sing? Yeah, so, so, and that goes, what you're talking about goes back to, like, which I think God is ever doing with us is renewing our minds concerning his things. So we're quick to say, like, man, you have to be a good singer to do this. But yet and still, I've seen, which we, that's why you have karaoke. I've seen people, when their favorite songs come on, you could turn around and be like, da -da 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 -da, and you're not caring anything about how the person's singing. You're just enjoying this song that you have in common that you love. And we have to start modeling around our home. So even you got to have fun with it. Sometimes my wife do it and she'll play around with it. She might be like, you know what I mean? And she'll just start playing with it. But we'll enjoy, we're engaging it. We're no longer thinking about, hey, don't sing that because you'll sing. So I would say if somebody's doing that, don't shun them the way. Yeah, that's don't good. Don't shun Join in. Join in and don't, worship. Yes. Don't hate Participate. Come on. Participate. There it is. There it is. Don't hate. Participate. All right. The third. So you engage in worship. You model worship. And then you said last one, you, just fa you facilitate worship. Facilitate worship. And now it's public, but you're calling people into it. Okay. Now you're calling people into it. Now it's like, okay, hey, I want to sit down. And before we pray today, before we dive into the word today, I'm going to play some William Magoo. So I'm just going to use him. I'm going to play some Travis Green. Or I'm going to play some uh, Kerry Job. And we're just going to sit. And I teach my children, we're just going to sit, let the music play, and we're going to sing along with it. Yeah. And if you want to sing, just sing along. If you just want to take it in and just listen, you're fine with that too. So now you're bringing it to every aspect of when you're engaging the word or when you're engaging in prayer, you're allowing that to be, be part of, I mean, be part of, be as, as essential to just everyday things that you're doing when you're diving in God's word and when you're praying. Lou, so now I, you're Okay, so Lou, I know that you don't have this problem because you're just the greatest dad in the world. But for some of those like me who um, have not learned the art of, you know, getting my kids to buy in, you know, to to this idea of worship and, you know, that and you got half the kids that are willing to play along with you or not play along, but to do it, to engage with you. But then you have some that is like over there, you know, like I ain't doing this, you know, they're. Like, what do you do in those times, in those cases where you got some people who are a detriment to the the environment of worship? Yep, yep, yep. So, and, and this one I do because I'm I'm with you. I got about two hundred children from mad any rate uh, age range from eleven to man, about nineteen. So what I do, I start off with, uh, and this is still worship. I grab a, a worship song from KB, the rapper. Mm -hmm. And I, I grab a song I know they love, and I turn it on first. So now we know we praise it through Christian rap. Now mm -hmm. it's boom, boom, it's the truth, whoever. And now we're enjoying it, we're making it fun and say, hey, we get ready to talk. We're gonna dive in, but hey, let's praise God first. What's your favorite rap song? Oh, I want to hear this. All right, cool. 
We go through all those songs of rap joints. Now I'm allowing them to be involved. Same way I do on Sunday mornings. I don't start worship until I'm talking to people and let them engage them, let them know like, this is not just a meeting. This is all of us. Hey, let's worship God together. So I do that through using, especially with young folks, Christian rap. No, not all of it, but no, Christian rap that you yeah. know, like that's bringing praise unto the Lord. And then I break the ice with that. And then I say, okay, cool. Let's, let's bring it down. What's your favorite? What's your favorite slow joint? What's your favorite like gospel or CCM? So I'm kind of letting them create the playlist. No, I love create- that. I love that idea. I mean, you, you're saying letting them create the playlist, letting them engage. It's not just kind of trying to guilt them or shame them into doing it, but you allow, you're bringing them in. You're ushering them into the presence of the Lord. I mean, it's, it's the idea of contextualization. It's bri- building a bridge to that. And I think that's a great thing when you're talking about facilitating worship, because when you begin to facilitate worship, then you got to get out of the category that it's no longer just about you. You're bringing other people into the presence of God. And it's important that you also recognize the other people that are coming in. And it's not just about people singing the songs that you want to sing or doing it the way that you want to do it. So that's good. So how do you balance that tension between leading them somewhere and recognize that we are going to worship God, but then at the same time, taking others into consideration, moving it from you modeling it to facilitate? What are some things that you think about it in terms of that? Yeah, yeah. so one, you... If you if you hit on the head. One, you have to embrace everybody's uh, preferences or style of work of music and praise as what it is. Like if a person just loves, if your child just loves, like I just I'm not into this, but I'm into that. Then you embrace it as worship. Mm. I mean, because you're showing value to what they appreciate, and it's just discipleship. When you think about discipleship, you just like, hey, I'm just trying to meet them where they at and bring them to where they need to be at. And I'm not saying where they at is wrong. I'm valuing what they are. So I do that by just really saying, hey, even if it's all rap before we dive into this word, and it's still talking about Jesus, talking about Yeshua, yo, I still value that's the worship first. A lot of times we got to get beyond our own our own mindsets to be able to lead people. Yeah, that's because sometimes good. Sometimes we're going where we want to go. We just stop it because in our mind we're like, nah, I don't think that'll work. We're like, no, nah, it, it may work. So, yeah, you just have to be able to get beyond your own mindset and approach all of it as worship and praise and say, hey, we're going to use this to facilitate this time. And trust, most importantly, trust the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit will bring everybody and bring everything together this time, as long as we have our open hearts as we lead. That's good. And I think that that's a great way that when you talk about principle, prudence, and preferences, you know, and then we allow our preferences a lot of times to dictate whether or not we can genuinely worship God. Again, I am here with uh, Pastor Lucius, as you guys already know, um, worship pastor, city pastor, a um, lover of God, someone who models this both at home and with us at Blueprint when we are gathering and has been leading us even on Sundays. Lou, I want to open it up to just some of the things. we got a couple more minutes. Uh, open it up to some questions or comments that people may have. Um, Jackie has said, man, this is really good. Um, Holly is affirming that I can sing. She says, sure, you can, Dahadi. So she is affirming the fact that I can't sing. Thank you for the affirmation, Holly. I really appreciate it. Finda basically says it don't even matter, you know, um, what you sound like when you're by yourself, you know, which is also good. Domingo, that's really good right there. Every week, everyone in our house is choosing a song to play. We start at 1030 and then and then we um, log into the blueprint at 11. Last week, we chose Lecrae and Holland. I choose I I chose um, I don't believe by James Cleveland. Oh, he went old school on it. And then the girls were singing, singing it the whole day. You know, I think it's good. It's just like you, I love that. I love that, that reality that, you know, just different ways for us to lead our family into worship, you know, and I love what Lou, what you just said is the first is you just said, we are all worship leaders. We are all worship leaders. Like we got to understand our identity and then how we create an atmosphere of, of worship leading is that one, we need to, you need to engage in worship. Two, you need to model worship. And then three, you need to help facilitate worship. Um, Lou, take a couple of minutes, or not a couple of minutes, take a couple of seconds of, like, who are some other artists? I know you mentioned earlier Gustos. Well, who are some other people or other ways um, and other methodologies of helping us to facilitate or even to, to create that, that, that idea? Yeah, uh, just some quick resource for children. I use like Life Kids for okay. children. So YouTube, you can find it on Apple Music and YouTube. It's called Life Kids. It has a lot of worship songs on that. But uh, 
it's not just worship songs is where you just listen to music, but you can also see the lyrics. So that's very important. So when you're okay. facilitating, have lyrics with the videos, find videos, which you can find on YouTube that has the lyrics to the song so people can join in corporately, which is very important. So uh, Life Kids is a good one. Uh, when you Gusto is a great one. Uh, I'm trying to think. Our playlist. Uh, and I know some people still trying to find it. If you go to our app and you go down to the bottom, it says, uh, one of them say community. If you click on community at the bottom of the app, you'll see sermon, you see all that, but it say community. You click on that, it'll come up with some options. And uh, BP Music Playlist is on there. And you can find that at our app. The Blueprint app yeah. is where you can get that. You can download the Blueprint app on any Android or um, real smartphone called iPhones that you can um, you can download that on. So, yeah, the Blueprint yeah. app. Thank you to our Spotify playlist, which plays all the songs that we sing on Sunday morning worship. Okay, no, that's good. Stacy Mosby basically said that she also have found that Tori Kelly is a great artist to meet teens where they are, yes. you know, and so that that is that is good. That is good. So um, it sounds like our comments are kind of running dry, and just really wanted to remind everyone this is Passion Week, and so we want to be living passionately for Jesus during the Passion Week. We want to learn his story afresh. So as a church body and as a congregation, we're going through Mark chapter 11 yesterday, 12 today, 13, 14, 15, one chapter a day. We'll be doing our Good Friday service talking about and celebrating that. And so we just we want to do that, you know, as a as a church family. And this is really important for us to to sit at the feet of Jesus. And in there, and if you had, you know, in there, remember we talked about memorizing God's word, meditating on God's word, reading God's word, um, responding to God's word with repentance, you know, and just really praying through God's word, allowing the word of God to be hidden in our hearts. And I think it's really important for us to understand. One of the questions before we let you go, Lou, is that um, it's actually from my wife. She says, can we get the words on Sunday to worship? Can we actually have the words on the screen? She put you on the spot, Lou. Can we Can we do that? Hey, that's, a, that's a Hannah question. That's a Hannah question? Okay. Hey, listen, it's always good. Whenever you, wherever in doubt, blame someone else. That, that's, you know, that's the, it's the woman you gave me. It's the woman you gave me. We'll, we'll work on that. We'll work on trying to get the words um, to the scene. But Lou, I do want to appreciate you. I, I've, I've told you this. I mean, appreciate your team, you know, all the way from Angelica to, you know, just everyone. I don't want to go through all the names because I end up missing someone. But I do just want to appreciate you guys, man, and leading us, even virtually. It, it, it is giving me, every time I hear you guys worship, uh, even through the screen, it just kind of reminds me of like, oh man, this is home. It reminds me of being home you know, being back on Sunday and, and creating an environment where we can generally worship God. And, it, and it's good to know that our worship leader and the person who is leading us in worship on a weekly basis is also, is actually at doing it at home and has given us some very practical tools. You can tell the stuff that you've given us are things that you're really doing and you're really implementing. And so I just really appreciate you. I appreciate your team and I appreciate you not just developing great musicians and great singers, but developing great worshipers you know, of the Lord and cultivating that within our body. And so once again, we are out of time, but I really appreciate you. I appreciate everyone getting on. And um, until next time, we'll see you guys later. Peace. Peace.